Okay, so this is the stand play do breaking dual braking system. Uh, here's the model. Here's all the, the stuff that I installed on there. Uh, we're going to get into the next subject, which is the parts on top of there, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I installed this battery disconnect switch yesterday. I was real careful to put it in, not to twist any of the bolts, to break anything loose inside the solenoid, all that stuff. When I finally got it all hooked up, I found I had to hold this, the, the enable button in and start the motor to get the thing to engage. Well, what it turned out, this thing wasn't connecting at all when you press the button in. And so when I started the motor, the alternator kicked in and I got, got power to run the rest of the system. I troubleshot this thing down and found out that this supposed latching relay does not latch. I don't know what kind of piece of junk they sold me here, but it does not latch. And I was, like I said, I was very careful. I didn't twist any of the nuts, anything else. The only, only bolt I put on there was the ground wire. I believe it was on, I can't remember which stud, this stud, I believe. And the thing malfunctioned right out of the gate. Was not happy. After troubleshooting it, I just went ahead and put the cable on directly so I could get my truck running and, and went from there. So I started thinking about this. What do I want to do? Go cry to, to a Roadmaster that their thing didn't work right, and then they're going to tell me, oh, you must have screwed it up in an install, blah, da, 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 you know, talk, talk, talk. I said, oh, the hell with it. I'm just going to put a manual switch in here. I don't care. I can pop the hood, turn the switch, and I'm good to go. I don't have any electrical buttons to push, any of that kind of garbage going on. So I wanted to get a thing. I looked online and I said, and I found out uh, Bass Pro Shops has a lot of marine stuff. This is a marine battery disconnect switch. And I should be able to cable this in and make this work. I'm going manual on this thing. Forget about this electronic junk that fails. This switch is either going to be on or off. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on, and I won't have the convenience of pushing the little button underneath the dash to turn it on. But you know what? I want stuff that works. I don't want to play games with uh, faulty electronic components. Anyway, so here we go. I'm going to install this thing on my, on my truck, and we're going to make this project, uh, finish this project up. Okay, so I was looking at my switch. Got it apart, opened it. They got these little covers that come off on the sides did that but then I noticed let's get this camera right that uh, they don't fit these things don't fit on there so I'm gonna have to uh, do a little drilling and make them fit okay so quick and easy I just used the lock washer that was on the post there and sized it with the drill bit and I believe this is uh, a 13 30 seconds drill, but uh, I just uh, sized it up, and that's the one that seems to fit. Okay. My wife says, why do you save all these old nuts and bolts? Well, I started digging around through some of my stuff, and I found just the perfect size to fit into this hole. And I'll use this nut with the star washer mounted to it. It'll captivate inside this hole here. I should be able to tighten it from the back and have a nice smooth fit. I'm going to take the little gates here and take a coping saw and just cut a little notch in here to run the battery cables through. Okay, so I'm continuing to install this switch. So I got it in here. I drilled out the, the lugs to fit in here okay. These little gates, I had to take a uh, coping saw and cut them and then as I fit them in there, I dress them up a little bit with a rat tail file and get them to fit nice and snug. I put the gate in while I'm tightening this, put the gate in while I'm tightening this screw so it makes sure that it aligns when we're all done. I wouldn't want to get the screws all tight and then find out, oh, the gate doesn't fit. Okay, so continue on. I'm going to put this thing all back together again. I'll show you the finished product. Okay, a little bug. The 32 uh, nuts I found with the star washer on them don't quite fit in the hole that I'm trying to go into. So I'm just going to go with a regular nut. should jam up in the hole just fine and tighten down. But uh, yeah, a little adjustment. Again, I go to my boneyard and I find some screws, some nuts that uh, well should do the job. Okay, the switch is installed. 
put it in there everything fits nicely this cover went this cover went back on snugly it's on there tight everything's covered up there's no electrical exposure got the switch here that's on that's off easy enough pop the hood turn the switch basic sometimes simple is the best that is the best way to go i like simple mechanical things because guess what for some reason they always seem to work anyway i'm going to junk that solenoid switch and uh go from there maybe one of my days when i don't have anything better to do i'll rip the damn thing apart to see what's inside i do that that's how i learned how to do a lot of this stuff is just tear it apart and see how it ticks okay so this concludes this project uh, on this 2021 GMC Canyon, the AT4 model. Now I've got to hook this thing up to the, the, uh, the motorhome and I'm going to see how the mechanisms all work. Uh, I might have to do a couple small modifications and go from there, but I think this project is done. And uh, again, the mechanical switch is a hell of a lot easier than the other one. Um, the only thing I got out of that uh, solenoid switch was the cables. The cables were useful. Guess what? They're simple too. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this helps. Okay, just a little recap on all this project. This is a 2021 GMC Canyon, the AT4 model. So I kept looking online trying to figure out this vehicle is towable and I want to tow this behind my motorhome. So I went through e-trailer to buy the parts and I want to figure out how to get this towed. So I went to a, I bought the base plate, which was mounted on the front and the tail light uh, diodes, diodes and lighting system. And I went into a trailer shop here in uh, Santa Clara and uh, they, uh, did a real good job taking the whole front end off of this truck and uh, putting in the base plate system and the breakaway switch down here. This is the base plate in here. Of course, this is their connection and the breakaway switch in there. So they did a good job on that. When I had them do the install, I had them bring the trailer wiring up here by near the battery box, loop it up here so I could make the connections to it for the brake controller. Now I went ahead and I, I went ahead and, and uh, did the brake controller install. And uh, that's been a chore. It's been interesting. So to recap that, there's two parts to the brake controller, uh, basically three, but two, there's the control box, which I ended up mounting down under here. Did that. And there's another little control box that I couldn't put on the, driver's side so I had to put it on the passenger side now to find a hole through the firewall was difficult so I ended up pulling the pins on the bottom of this of the glove compartment and there's little plastic pins or little pinch pins on the end so you pinch them pull them out drop the glove compartment down and then I went to the there's a feed through where the heater core water lines come in so I ended up drilling a hole in there and I drilled close to a half inch hole, but I couldn't get all the wiring plus the pneumatic hose for the air cylinder through. So I had to drill an additional quarter inch line, inch hole to get the uh, pneumatics for the air cylinder to work. So I did that. Most of the connections are up underneath this glove box and not too many underneath the, the hood of the vehicle. I don't know if I can get a good look at this down here. That's the line going through. Can't get a good look at where the water, here where the water connections come through. All I'm getting is uh, the lines I added on there. So then I ended up running the lines across the top here, all the way around to this. And I used this sheathing in the kit. This is the vacuum line, which I had to tee in down here. Then we made some additional wiring connections up here, you know, to the switch and and uh, breakaway switch so I brought this around here I originally put in 
This guy here is your charging isolator from, I'm gonna get charged from the, the, the motor home. It's gonna run here, keep the battery charged. Because this is a full disconnect system where you have to disconnect the battery while you're towing. But you need a battery to run your, uh, run your Demco uh, stay and play dual system. So I put in the, the, the uh, there's supposed to be a, a battery disconnect switch. I put it in and the darn thing, the solenoid was no good. So I opted, I just went down and went down and I bought it from, a, a, actually it's Bass Pro Shops, a marine switch. You just turn this thing on and off and that disconnects your battery. So I've got this all set up. Here's some of the components that I've used. Here's the Denco stay and play dual system. That's the major part of your braking system in here. This is the schematic for it. It's in the instructions in there. I'm, I'm a technician by trade and so give me a schematic and I can follow the map. Then uh, this is the diode instructions or the uh, for the charging system that comes from the motor home to the battery to keep the battery charged while you're driving and it's disconnected from the vehicle. This is the uh, remote battery disconnect switch and I found that this uh, solenoid is supposed to be latching. You should push the button it should latch on, you should push the button it should latch off. Well it doesn't do either. I guess it stays off most of the time. You gotta have to push the button and hold it in all the time. I troubleshot it. It's the solenoid was a problem. And so I didn't want to mess around with the faulty component. I sure as heck don't want to be out on the road dealing with some kind of faulty thing and then figuring out I gotta rewire my battery cables just to make the vehicle run. So I went down to Bass Pro Shops. They had, uh, I went to their uh, boating things and I got a simple marine on off switch for battery disconnect. Put that in good to go so I, I this thing looks simple so this was basically the whole install of the system hopefully it went step by step and it'll help you out uh, going from there again I bought all these components from e-trailer um, they were responsive I got my parts real fast they did a good job with that so just make sure that you get exactly the right parts call them talk to them get your right parts there was a blog that was written by e-trailer and they specified the wrong base plate. I ordered the wrong base plate looking at their specifications. Turned out it was wrong. I had to send it back and get another one. So uh, talk to the people on the phone and get the, get the correct parts. You may have to be, wait a little while, but it's worth the wait.